What's up guys, Christine here, former data director and hiring manager and also founder of the Analytics Accelerator program, which takes you on the most direct path to becoming a data analyst today using standout business skills, analytical frameworks and job hunt strategies. And in today's video, I wanna walk you through some interview insights based on my experience having gone through a lot of interviews myself and also having interviewed many people over the years. And just to be honest with you guys, I see a lot of videos out there talking about what exactly the interview process looks like and what kind of questions that you're gonna get asked. But I don't see a lot of information out there about how exactly to actually respond to these questions, how to translate your previous experience into a way that actually resonates with data hiring managers, and also how to respond to situational questions when you haven't actually bumped into those situations before. So that's what we're going to dive into today. All right, are you guys ready? So we're gonna talk through a few things. The first is interviewer pillar. So what are interviewers actually looking for? And then your job as an interviewee, what are the things that you should be brushing up on before you actually step into the interview? And then we're gonna talk through the guaranteed questions. So questions that you're definitely gonna get and how to respond to them. And then some trickier questions that you might get, especially for roles that are asking for one to two or three years of related experience. And I'm actually going to be the interviewer and also the interviewee in these slides and show you some so-so responses and then walk you through what standout responses actually look like. And then we're gonna close out with a bird's eye perspective of how this all fits together in the end-to-end -end interview process. So the first thing is what are interviewers actually looking for? There's basically four main pillars here. These shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but the first one is technical skills. So do you meet the technical qualifications for the job? Analytical experience, do you know how to apply these tools to answer business questions? Domain knowledge, do you have existing domain knowledge about the company, industry, and business model? And then also the culture fit. So do you have the kind of working style, personality, and motivation that would succeed on this job? A lot of people don't realize that it's a lot more about these three pillars right here than it is just about this first pillar. And a lot of early career data analysts kind of over-orient themselves towards just having the technical skills and just think, if I can just get to really high levels on leak code or strata scratch, then that will mean I have the skills to succeed in the interviews. Not realizing that actually the biggest pillar is getting analytical experience. And that means having the tools as a cohesive system. So knowing how to apply SQL, Excel, Tableau, or Looker or Power BI as a language on the actual day-to-day -day job. Have analytical frameworks for cleaning data, garnering insights, and giving guidance. These are the kinds of things that are bucketed in analytical experience and for earlier career data analyst roles where it requires like zero to one years of experience, they won't really test you on these things as much. But if you're applying to jobs that say one, two or three years of related experience, you will probably get questions about this bucket. The next is having domain knowledge. So you as an interviewee, you need to understand the business metrics of the company and the industry. So understand how does the company make money and what metrics are actually tied to that revenue number, which means having familiarity with the business model. And then lastly, with culture fit, in the end of the day, even if you check all these boxes, but this isn't there, right? You don't seem like you would actually fit in on the team or you don't seem like you would really enjoy working at that company or succeed at that company, then that also is something that you need to think about when it comes to interviews. And so this one is a little bit more of an intangible, but it comes across in the question that you ask and also the way that you actually deliver your responses. What we're gonna do now is walk through a few guaranteed questions and I'm gonna show you an okay response and then show you a standout response. And the first one, of course, is tell me about yourself. So here is a so-so response. Sure, um, well, I'm an aspiring data analyst who started out in project management a few years ago. And I worked at a company called eList where I was a project manager for a large pricing migration project. And then I moved to sales and customer success where I worked as a B2B sales rep for a software company and managed 10 customer accounts during my time there. Um, I've been self-studying Excel and SQL for the last year, and I've always loved working with data, and I just wanna grow my technical skills. So yeah, that's why I wanna work in data now. All right, here's an example of a much stronger response for the same person. Sure, so I started out in project management where I worked at an e-commerce company called eList, and I helped manage the operations for a pricing migration project across finance, sales, and marketing teams. And through that role, I learned about the dynamics in B2B companies, and eventually I wanted to work more on the customer-facing side of things. So after a few years, 
I moved to sales and customer success where I was responsible for communicating technical concepts to non-technical people. And I started using analytical thinking more on this job. I tracked my own performance metrics to optimize my sales process and help the team understand where we could improve. And I also focus on getting Excel and SQL experience on my own. And now I'm just really excited to combine all of these experiences in a data role where I can use these skills from being client facing, working in multiple teams, and also collaborating across different stakeholders in a more data-driven capacity. So a few notes here, I have underlined key phrases here that are, um, they're either like standout phrases that really resonate with interviewers or they're key phrases from job descriptions that usually relate to data jobs. So pay attention to these kinds of key phrases and see if you can sprinkle them into your own responses as you're prepping as well. All right, so some do's and don'ts here. Don't emphasize self-learning and don't tell the full history of your work. Instead, you wanna emphasize your unique combination that you bring to the table and also tell a data-related narrative. So um, keep in mind in that response just then, when I was talking about sales and customer success, I always brought it back to how it was related to an analytical job. All right. Question number two, so why are you interested in working at our company? I'm just gonna do an example with Vimeo because I used to work there. And a so-so response looks like this. Um, I've always liked Vimeo as a platform and I'm interested in the video space as someone who also has my own creative interests. And I just think I could learn a lot about product analytics here. And I think it would be fulfilling for me to be in a work culture that's focused on helping creatives. I'm also just interested in working in tech since I think that industry has more opportunities for growth. Here is a standout response. So I'm specifically drawn to Vimeo for two main reasons. Um, first, personally, I feel really strongly about the company's mission to empower creatives with better video tools as someone who is active in the creative community myself as a photographer. And second, as a data person, I'm just really curious to get experience working with SaaS businesses. I think there's a lot of interesting and rigorous possibilities to use data in this specific business model, given the fact that a lot of SaaS companies can innovate and test changes in their product pretty quickly. And on that note, I'm actually familiar with some of the innovations that Vimeo has been focusing on recently, like the release of a new webinar tool called Venues. And I'd be really excited to use my technical skills to help the data and product team understand the impact of these kinds of new releases. So again here, don't just frame it as like, I just want experience um, or I just want to learn. More so like, that, that's still a good trait to show, the wanting to learn, the wanting experience, and then also ending on some kind of note of, I'd also like to contribute. And this is why I specifically feel aligned to this company. One thing here is like, especially for earlier career roles, hiring managers are also looking for people who do have company interests because they will spend a lot of time training you and onboarding you because in this experience, you will learn a lot about what it's actually like to be a data analyst, right? So they are also paying attention to, does this person actually have specific motivation for our company or are they just looking for any kind of data role? So that's why this question is also important to prepare a more kind of personal and genuine response to. Okay, guaranteed question number three. So tell me about a time when you analyze a large data set, what steps did you take and what did you find? This is essentially the whole essence of a data analyst job. So you wanna make sure you have a really good response to this one as well, because the question is basically saying like, how would you do your job? How, how are the, what are some of the frameworks that you use to do the job of a data analyst? So here is a so-so response. Um, in one of my portfolio projects, I analyzed some sample data for a healthcare company and I used Excel to investigate the data and then I cleaned up using VLOOKUPs, IF statements, and other aggregation functions. And I made pivot tables to look at some initial trends. And then I created graphs to find minimums and maximums and ramble, ramble, ramble on about the technical stuff. So I analyzed campaign performance for a sample healthcare company called Row Health, in which I used Excel, SQL, and Tableau to surface insights to the marketing team, how different campaign categories performed in terms of North Star KPIs, like click-through rate, cost per signup, signup rate, signup count, and impressions. And the goal was to help the marketing team refine their budget for 2024 campaigns, as well as build a self-service tool for them to discover insights on their own. And so first I investigated and I cleaned the data in Excel, and then I loaded the data into BigQuery for querying since the data set was actually quite large. And after I looked into some preliminary stats and thought through how I wanted to structure visualizations for the marketing stakeholders, I built a dashboard in Tableau to look at the key metrics and segment the data 
by plan, state, and com campaign types across these key metrics. And I use the dashboard to dive into how certain categories perform relative to others. And then I create a presentation to summarize these findings and recommendations to the marketing team. In the end, I discovered that the health for all category outperformed on click through rate and sign up rate, specifically within campaigns focused on health awareness. And a few categories like golden year security and COVID related campaigns, which are geared towards different kinds of audiences, those actually had low click through rate or high cost per sign up. So I would have recommended to consider reallocating this budget to the higher performing category of health for all. So the don't here is don't just focus on the what, don't just focus on what you did, focus more on the so what. So what did you actually find? And I do have another video that talks about the ins and outs of these kinds of portfolio projects if you wanna check it out. Let's get to the trickier questions. Um, this question haunts me because I was interviewing for a job many years ago and I ended up not getting the job. And the hiring manager actually gave me feedback that it was because of my response to this question um, that made me that made them a little bit less sure about me as a candidate and the response was something along the lines of this So I just asked my manager how they want me to prioritize and then make sure I've communicated that prioritization to stakeholders And as I'm working through the different tasks I just make sure to keep people updated on my progress and expected timelines This is a fine response. I think when I was actually interviewing I just said something like I would ask my manager like I just hadn't bumped into that situation before and so I had no idea how to respond to that question this is how i would respond instead so when it comes to prioritization i think there are two things that are important first a ranking system to balance between business impact urgency and effort and second open communication so that everyone's aware of important changes to deadlines and project scope so to rank priorities, I would consider the relative business impact and urgency. So for example, a task required for tomorrow's board meeting, that would take precedence over exploratory analysis or running a report for some immovable deadline should be prioritized over last minute ad hoc tasks. And then in terms of the effort piece, we can always break bigger projects down into smaller pieces so that we can still make progress on some projects instead of completely forgoing one priority for another. So for example, if I need to deliver a report and a larger analysis in the same week, I'd actually just check in to see if we can first focus on preliminary exploration of the data that week, instead of expecting the entire project to be done by then so that I can also deliver the other report on time. Tricky question number two. So let's say you find something wrong with previous analysis that has already been delivered to stakeholders. How would you address this? Another question that haunts me because this actually um, it came up when I was working as a data analyst at a company where I had calculated a metric that was being released to the public for a very important presentation. And the calculation was actually wrong. Um, I had used the wrong query and didn't realize it. And my manager was very gracious and helped me understand exactly how to handle this kind of situation. But this is something that comes up in data jobs, right? A lot of times, um, you know it's a very technical job there will be mistakes made and it's not that you're expected to be perfect but you are expected to know how to handle these kinds of situations so here is a so-so response um, i would figure out why the mistake happened and then communicate to stakeholders about the cause and the impact of the mistake then i would make sure to have guidelines documentation and sanity checks to prevent that error from happening again again it's a fine response it's not very thorough here is how I would respond actually having gone through this experience of making my own mistakes on the job and how to handle them. So first I would try to assess the root cause of the issue, whether it's a simple mistake in code or something more severe like missing data that was overlooked for a long time. Um, I would want to evaluate the mistake, the impact of the mistake in terms of what decisions or dependencies it affects and also how long this issue has existed. So for example, I want to understand whether this is a one-time query for an internal analysis or an analysis that has been refreshed each month with the wrong numbers. Um, I'd also want to gauge how off the numbers are so that I can give stakeholders a benchmark for the magnitude of the issue. Then I would communicate to the stakeholders the error and its impact while also proposing a solution for the future. So for example, this could involve doing more sanity checks or peer reviews on the query logic or creating documentation so that everyone is on the same page about what is the right table to use. I check in with the team to make sure we're on the same page about the best path forward. That is the last questions. Whew, I'm a little out of breath from interviewing myself. Um, so just to recap something that I, I hope you have seen throughout these responses, 
is that you don't want to overdo the technical jargon, right? None of my responses, I didn't go that much into like technical functions unless someone is asking you about that specifically. Instead, I'm using data analyst lingo. And so if you want to learn more about what this data analyst actually is like so that you can sprinkle it into your interviews as you're prepping, um, just check out the description below. I have a resource about that there. All right, just to give a bird's eye perspective of how this all fits together, usually you'll have an HR screen, then a hiring manager screen. Those are both about 30 to 45 minutes. And then you normally will get a technical screen or a take home where you get a live technical interview or take home interview um, that will they'll give you like a few days to a week to do. And then lastly, behavioral and situational interviews, which are usually done in a panel setting where you talk with like four um, or five different people, either in small groups or individually. And overall, the process between these different stages usually takes about a week for people to respond to you. Don't freak out if it's been a little bit more than that, because honestly, there's a lot of coordination that's happening on the other side as well. But normally about a week or two weeks between the later rounds and then two to three weeks um, after the last round to get back to you with an offer, hopefully. So I hope this was helpful in helping you understand some of the kinds of things that we are looking for on the other side of hiring when it comes to data analyst interviews. If you are interested in coming to an in-person workshop and meetup soon, check out the description below because I am going to be doing some events in Paris, London, and New York this summer, and I would love to meet you in person. And that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have some more videos coming up about technical interviews, SQL, Excel, and also strategies for how to use all of these tools together as a system on the day-to-day -day job. And that's all for me today. I will see you soon.